Okay, so it's, uh, Shannon Davis here with Davis Technologies. Keep getting the question of why would I want a Davis box as opposed to what's already built in my EFI, be it a Holly, be it a Fuel Tech, uh, MSD with an ARC module. You know, they all have their versions of traction control, so they're much cheaper than yours. Why is uh, the Davis better? Why should I get it? Um, so we're going to try to do a little comparison here. Start out just showing you uh, how the other systems set up and work, and then we'll get a little more in-depth with Profiler. This is not a how to use your Holly or your Fuel Tech or your ARC module. If you've got them, you already know how to use them. Give a quick overview. I'm honestly not that familiar with the products. I don't look at them. Um, I just did for this video, learned how to kind of get around the different softwares a little bit. So we'll go over that, and then uh, we'll follow it up with some videos of actual results. So to start with, I want to explain what we have here at Davis is a unique piece of equipment that we can uh, take data, whether it's recorded in a profiler, recorded in your Holly, your race pack, whatever, we can bring that data into our simulator and play it back. So right now it's in this card here for PRI. And uh, all this equipment, by the way, will be at PRI. If anybody's got any questions or wants to check it out for themselves, you know, we can show you the difference in, on the exact same run what our stuff would do, what their stuff would do, yada, yada. So the simulator is very, very good at playing back runs exactly as they were recorded every time. So what that lets us do is I can make a thousand runs here in the shop playing with math, especially when pertaining like our, our self-learning algorithm, which nobody else offers anything like that. But um, as we're messing with the software, messing with features and settings and how things are actually working, the math in the background, uh, we can run it over and over and over. And all the guys I test with, no matter how good they are, they can't give me two of the same run. It's impossible. So here we can make the exact same run. So like here on a profiler screen, this is recorded at 400 samples a second. Um, and you can see there's one run. There's another one. It's there in blue. There's one on top of that. There's one on top of that. You know, it does it exactly the same every time. There's no difference. Um, so that lets us do these comparisons as well without arguing, well, it was a different run, it's just that. It's exactly the same. It's a tool. I think we're the only ones that, I know the only ones that have this tool. Uh, there's other similar things uh, available, but they're, they're not this good at uh, doing this. So to get into a little deeper, quickly, this is a profiler. We'll get into that later. Uh, we're going to look at the... MSD ARC module and how it's set up. We're going to look at the Holly and how it's set up. And we'll take a look at the Fuel Tech and how it's set up. So you can see just from those brief little screenshots, they're all very similar. You have a desired RPM you want to go, and you've got limits for uh, timing, rev limiters above and below that. So starting with the ARC module, first of all, you've got 16 dots to work with. And then you have a retard A and a retard B. So if we zoom in here, uh, we go to the retard. That's the rev limit curve. Here's retard A, the red one. Okay. So our here's our actual run played into the ARC module from the simulator, recorded by the ARC module. And we've got the first retard line 50 RPM above and the second retard line 100 RPM above. You can bring an old run in as a reference, but you have to hand drag, hand place the dots and you've only got 16 to work with. I think you can add more. Yep, so you may be a somewhat unlimited, but you just have to keep doing that and then you drag the dot where you want it. So you can get there. And uh, in the case of an ARC module, it can do retard or retard more. Doesn't do any timing advance like the profiler does. Or the, T, uh, no, the TC3 doesn't advance. Sorry. All right, so we get our dots. We'll do the irregularities in one run versus the next. You've got to leave a certain margin here, or it's going to be constantly running over the line retarding. So you take your time, and you get this just so to where it's like you want it. Can't get that one to move. There we go. And I think one of the limitations of this type of system is 
you just don't have time to do this between rounds. It's not realistic. And then, so what it does, if your new RPM, your, your actual run on the track, doesn't do anything until you cross the red line. And then it starts retarding. And if you cross the green line, it'll retard. I think it's a green one. It'll retard more. And then we can show the rev limit line, uh, which right now is right on top of the second retard. But that'll drop. That'll hit the rev limiter. Um, and according to users, it's a little harsh. So if it's between the actual until it gets the first line, it does nothing. Once it crosses the first line, it starts to retard. Cross the second line, it starts to retard more. Cross third line, it'll uh, start dropping cylinders. So that's basically an arc module in a nutshell. Move on to the Holly. Pretty much the same thing. You are limited to 31 dots total. You can compress them to more important parts of the run, say the first second or two. You can have all your dots or most of your dots and get some detail. Again, you can't generate the lines from the existing run, which is quite a big deal. And then just the way that RPM is measured, you know, we have three patents that cover just the way we measure RPM, which is super accurate. Just the way you measure RPM, you'll notice our data is much more detailed once it's recorded at 400 hertz and the way the RPM is measured. It picks up every little thing the drive shaft does, especially with that 32 tooth ring. So due to the nuances of the way the other systems may measure RPM, we can play the same run back. It's exactly the same in Profiler. It'll be slightly different in these other systems. So then it means you can only get your limit lines so close or you're going to have false corrections. So these you can um, you can physically grab and drag the dots around and it interpolates between dots or you can go in here and highlight your cells, enter numbers individually. You can, uh, I think they've got some functionality here to, uh, I forgot how to do it, but you can add like 50 to the whole run I think or highlighted cells. You can just add a number to them, um, an offset. And again, the Holly can retard, retard more, or drop cylinder. So it's essentially an arc module stuck in your Holly fuel injection. I think that's a $500 upgrade. So a lot of bang for the buck. Perfectly good system. Is it a profiler? No, it's not a profiler. It's not a TC3, um, which we'll get into both those systems. So then we have the fuel tech. Same setup. Um, right now we've got them all set up with 50 RPM to the first line, 100 to the second, with 5 and 10 degrees retard on all, all the systems we're comparing. We can actually run all the systems into and record on the race pack um, simultaneously, with the exception of we can do like one Davis system at a time and one EFI system at a time. So we can do a Davis, an ARC module, and the Holly, or a Davis, ARC module, and fuel tech. Can't do two EFIs at the same time because they use the universal EFI adapter and you only run one of those on your race pack at a time. So, but we'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, fuel tech, same deal. You got your, your dots. You got 32 dots to work with. I think that's all you can do. Um, there's no smoothing features. There's none of that stuff. You can hand drag or you can edit your numbers. Uh, you can do some quick little add and subtract or whatever for your offsets. Uh, we've got them set here. I've, I'm sorry, I just set it at three degrees and 10 degrees. Um, on all these systems now, if you do put your first retard line right on your drive shaft, actual, then it will start retarding as soon as it crosses the line. But you'll find you have to leave a little bit of margin or you get too many false corrections. The fuel tech does have the ability to do an, uh, an add timing. So I've got three degrees of add and 10 degrees of subtract when I was messing with it. And it will do a, you know, if it's slow, if it's below the line, it can add a little time. If it's above the line, it can subtract uh, timing. And it can also do a rev limiter. So, um, and I guess based on how far away your rev limit line is from your actual is how hard it rev limits. I think you can set, um, uh, you know, the aggressiveness that way. So that's those three systems in a nutshell and then what we'll do next is jump over to some actual uh, profiler setup and then we'll do some runs here's a quick teaser 
uh, MSD ignition timing. So the orange is the arc module, okay? The pink right now is the fuel tech. And the blue down here is the profiler, okay? This green is your drive shaft off of a pro stock. These humps are gear change. Well, this is tire slip. And this is gear changes, gear change, gear change. And you can see the results. Profiler, here's the base timing. It's When it goes up, it's retarding in this setup. And if it's below, it's adding, okay? Um, so here it's just right, it's riding right on the line. Uh, let me jump the profile right quick. Turn on the profile. You know, we can do uh, 400 dots a second if we want. We typically do 40 dots a second. I'll show you we have lots of tools to manipulate and generate these graphs automatically. Um, we also have our whole self-learning strategy. So, you know, in this example, like here, the profiler is adding timing. Here you see it dip down the drive shaft. Here you see it add timing, right? Then it goes above the drive shaft. So it's retarding timing based on these ranges. Um, let me go back to the race pack real quick. So you can see the art module is fairly simplistic in its corrections. It sees uh, something over the line. It pulls timing, okay? Um, cannot add timing. It can eventually get into a rev limiter. I've got the fuel tech here set up a little bit of add. So here it was at the starting line. It, uh, I guess this is two-step. Let go of the button right about here. So it immediately it's behind. So it added some timing. Then it saw this hump that was above the line they drew. So it retarded. Same deal here. Um, it saw the spike go above, so it retarded. There's a not sure what it saw there. Um, probably the way the dots interpolated the data. So it retarded a little bit there when there's really nothing going on. Uh, we were actually adding timing at that point. Um, and you can also see the speed of the corrections. You know, as soon as it starts up, profiler's got it. You can see there's some delay there, a little bit on the art module. I can tell you this nice little uh, angled line right here is actually just the data interpolating. It's not actual retard. When the arc goes over the line, it retards. It doesn't ramp it out. I don't know if you can see it. That's that's just data interpolation on the race pack doing that. So, um, so there's a quick overview of the systems, and uh, we'll get in next to doing some... Uh, a to B comparisons of the different models live on the race pack. Like I said, that we can do all three systems at one time or three of the systems at one time. We'll also get into the self-learning. So stay tuned for more.